and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ, and welcome to the service of morning prayer and communion here at First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ in Columbus, Ohio. Today is the 12th Sunday after Pentecost. I'm the Reverend Emily Corzine, Associate Minister. I'm joined here today by Senior Minister Reverend Tim Ahrens, Director of Christian Education Mark Williams, and Minister of Music Kevin Jones. We're glad that you joined us here for worship. You can find worship materials on our worship page of our website, www.first-church.org. We are a growing, vibrant community of faith rooted in the social gospel and witness to justice and mercy here in our community and in our world. So if you're looking to work on issues of justice, serve those in need, or to grow in your own faith and deepen your connection with this faith community in a more meaningful way, please check us out. Let us know that you're here watching this service today in whatever platform. Uh, let us know that you're here so we can respond and be together. People of God, let us turn our hearts toward the sacred and lean into the beauty of worship, lend our voices to prayer and song, and let us support each other and lean on each other during this difficult time. Let us worship God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let, Let us rejoice Lord. and be glad in it. O God, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Good morning, everyone. How are you this morning? I've got my backpack. Guess what that means? Today is the blessing of the backpacks. Do you have yours? If you don't, it's okay. Just listen, okay? All right. I have to tell you something. And that is that when I was teaching, for every year at the beginning of the school year, I would wake up in the middle of the night Going through all the rules, this is what you're allowed to do, what you're not allowed to do. I was doing it in my sleep. I was nervous. Did you know that teachers get nervous too? Sure. And I know you're nervous about the new school year. And I will have to say this. All of the teachers, the administrators, 
and all the kids are a little nervous this year because, boy, is it ever going to be different, right? Yeah, it's going to be different. But you know what? We can still get excited about learning. And I want you to be excited because you're going to learn all kinds of things. And I'm so excited for you. It's going to be different, but it's okay. You will be all right, and you're going to learn great things. Now, here's the deal. You're going to learn a lot, but you're also going to still continue to be a little nervous or scared. It's okay. You're not alone. God is always with you, and it'll be fine. So now, let's have a blessing for the backpacks, for you, and for all the teachers and administrators. Okay? So, let's pray. Gracious and loving God, bless these children and these youth. Bless the teachers and the administrators and all who are involved in education. In these times that are very different, help us to be kind. Help us to be understanding. Help us to be flexible. And great, gracious God, bless all the tools that we use in our learning. The pencils, the paper, the notebooks, the backpacks, the computers, the Wi-Fi, the internet. All of those things bless us and bless them. Keep them safe. Keep each one of us safe as we learn and grow in our knowledge. Not only the book knowledge, but also your love. In your son's precious name, amen. Have a great week whenever you start school. See you next week. Throughout the summer, we have had readings from the Hebrew Scripture in the book of Genesis. Today, we move to the second book of the Bible as we receive the first words in the book of Exodus. Listen for the word of God from Exodus chapter 1. Now a new king arose over Egypt, who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, Look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, or they will increase, and in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore, they set taskmasters over them to oppress them with forced labor. They built supply cities, Pithom and Ramses, for the Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter with hard service, in mortar and brick and in every kind of field labor. They were ruthless in all the tasks that they imposed on them. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shiphrah and the other Puah, when you act as midwives to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a boy, kill him. If it is a girl, she shall live. But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but they let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwives said to the Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes, and the midwife feared God. He gave them families, and they multiplied and became very strong. And the Pharaoh commanded all his people, Every boy that is to be born to the Hebrews shall be thrown into the Nile, but you shall let every girl live. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. 
The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she asked that he was, if he was a fine baby, she hid him for three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him, plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket and among the reeds, there among the reeds, and sent a maid to bring it. And when she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying, and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrew children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him in as her son, and she named him Moses, because she said, I drew him out of the water. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thank Thanks be to God. God. from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 16. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today we continue the sermon series for such a time as this, seven lessons for living through pandemic times. We find ourselves in the book of Exodus, and if there ever was a story to spend some time with, it would be the story of the Israelites. What unfolds early in the great, is the great superpower Egypt has a new king, Pharaoh, who is fearful, intimidated, and worried about the Hebrew people. They were slaves to the Egyptians and also are fruitful and are multiplying. So Pharaoh puts out a decree to have a newborn, any newborn Hebrew boy murdered and thrown into the Nile. What happens next is the pivotal story in scripture, and it's a great story. We hear today the remarkable story of strong and courageous and faithful women willing to not follow the rule of law, but instead to flip power and authority on its head. We hear about the midwives, who stand in vital resistance to the decree of the king that every newborn male should be killed. We hear the story of a mother, desperate to keep her baby alive, who is willing to put her baby, her three-month-old, in a basket lined with modern-day, what would be modern-day Kevlar, and send that boy into the river, knowing that he might not survive. We hear the story of two young women, one the baby's older sister and one Pharaoh's daughter, the princess, as they work to save a baby and ensure that he survives. The princess knew what she was supposed to do when she found a baby boy. Her father was the one who put the rule in place, but she was supposed to turn the basket over in the water. She knew what the law required. She knew that she was supposed to uphold it. But what's interesting in this passage from the book of Exodus is that without these women who dared greatly, who brokered a deal to save a baby in a basket, there would be no Moses, no Exodus, no liberation of the people of God. So if you're thinking of how you're going to live through pandemic times and need a good story, a good narrative to distract you from the challenges of your day, why not start with this one? When de faithful and defiant women set the whole Exodus story into motion. The two Hebrew midwives named Shipra and Pua are faithful to God. They are tasked to fulfill the decree from Pharaoh. But Pharaoh knows that if I target the boys of the people you want to dominate, and then eventually you will destroy them. But Shipra and Pua, and if you're interested, Shipra means little flower, uh, and, and Pua means lovely, little flower and lovely. So if you're thinking of this story, then these confident and defiant women called little flower and lovely defy the order. And with their strength and their conviction, they disobey. Boy, resistance is a powerful thing. Sometimes in the midst of challenging circumstances, like the ones the women faced, what helps clarify decision-making and nav is navigating turbulent times is in the clarity that comes when we tell the truth. Resistance is a powerful thing. And truth-telling here is huge. The princess shares the truth when she sees the baby in the basket. This must be one of the Hebrew's children. And she says that the baby, and, and as she says, and the baby's sister steps out of the reeds to insist that she can find someone to help nurse him. Both of them taking action to save a life to give Moses a future, and the future of his people. Like Shipra and Pua, Moses' little sister and the princess defy what was expected of them, 
and found clarity in their purpose and what they saw in front of them, in the reeds on the banks of the river. And when I read this text over and over, I'm inspired by these courageous actions of the women in this text. And I'm reminded that when our relationship to God is clear, all of our other priorities come into order. Pastor Jill Duffield notes that in the story of the Hebrew midwives, Shipra and Pua, little flower and lovely, how this is so evident. The midwives fear God, and that the fear of God, they acknowledge the knowledge and acknowledgement of God must be obeyed not Pharaoh. And that knowledge gives them strength and fortitude and courage and bravery. When we know who God is, when we stand, we stand a better shot of not conforming to this world around us. Instead, we live a life of service and justice and love. Sober judgment accompanies a clear understanding of who God is, and subsequently, who we are. Such a confession comes, becomes foundational for God's work in and through us. So I don't imagine that Shipra and Pua plan to risk their lives or to stand up to Pharaoh that day. They decided they would fear God no matter what the cost. But sometimes we find ourselves in with a stark choice in front of us. A choice to conform to the world, remain safe, or proclaim the truth, to fear God, and to be bold regardless of what comes next. What's amazing is that God will, in fact, give us the words and the fortitude, and fortitude when we need it the most. So I think about living in these pandemic times, pandemic upon pandemic. Maybe you find yourself these days in an uncomfortable space, in a space that is not offering you joy, a situation that is not allowing you to be your best self. And the only way forward is to do some serious truth telling. So how are you alert? and aware of your surroundings, prepared for any dangers that come. Wherever you find yourself, God will find a way forward. God will provide a way forward, even when the path is not clear, even when the waters are murky. God's liberating work begins in that murky water, the water along the Nile, among the reeds, the waters that we find ourselves in now. Living in and out of murky waters means we have to take a risk, trusting that God will catch us, that God will guide us. And in time, God's liberating hand will free us. Thanks be to God. God be with you, and also with you. That there may be purpose and fulfillment, O oh God, in all we do. That we may show others this day the love that you have taught us. That the church throughout the world may respond to your call for peace and justice. That those who are in need may be helped and comforted. I invite us now, wherever we are, at home or here, if we're 
far from family or loved ones, I invite us to lift up in our hearts, either just holding our prayers in our hearts or lifting them aloud to pray for the special needs and concerns of your family, of our congregation, our members, our friends, those who are listed in our prayers today in the bulletin, the Depart to Serve, but also those who are in our hearts and minds. And again, pray silently or lift their names aloud. Gracious God, I am fully aware, we are aware that these are challenging times, and some of us are going through some challenging hardships in these times. We've taken on a lot emotionally, spiritually, physically, to overcome the challenges of these times. I ask, Lord, that you help us remember we're not alone. Help us have the, the presence of mind and the strength of being like the midwives to stand in the place where we are and stand up for what we believe and help us to cry out when we need help. Help us not to bear the burdens of this day and of these times all by ourselves, but to know that our friends are not far, that you are never far. And we ask that we lift those in our hearts always who need your tender love and mercy. We pray these prayers that we may be strengthened by your grace for the tasks of this day. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Almighty God, give us faith to live this day, not knowing where it will lead, but with the assurance that your love and guidance are with us always. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The last few years, we have taken up the mantle of raising in our offering funds to support the ACLU Foundation of Ohio. We are blessed right now in Ohio with the leadership of Ben Guest, a United Church of Christ pastor and leader through many years, and now the head of the ACLU in Ohio. Ben has reminded us through time that the ACLU has a distinctive uh, presence in this nation. Since its beginning, there has not been one president of the United States who has not spoken out against them. That's quite a comment, right? Whether Democrat or Republican. It's important to remember that they stand in the place of people's greatest need, defending liberties, defending justice for all. And so that's an uncomfortable space. But with your gifts, we help them address the needs of this community, this state, and the nation. So be generous in sharing with the ACLU Foundation of Ohio. These gifts are nonpartisan, but they will make particular differences now and in the time ahead. Let us be generous in sharing.
That baby grew up. Moses grew up. And in time, he led his people to freedom through the power of God. And that freedom is celebrated every year by the Jewish people to this day. Every year since the time of the Passover, there has been a recognition and a celebration around the table to celebrate the Feast of Freedom. It was at that table on that night, the Last Supper, that Jesus was celebrating communion with his disciples. They were celebrating Passover together. And on that night, he did something very different. Instead of just handing them the wine and all the times that they were drinking, he said something about that wine that was different. Instead of just passing the pita bread, the unleavened bread, he changed the script forever. He said to them that night, at the end of the Passover Seder, this is my body broken for you. Whenever you partake of this bread from this point on, do this in memory of me. He took the cup that night, the final cup of wine, the final cup of the Passover Seder, and said, drink this cup, all of you. This is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this cup, do this in remembrance of me. From Passover to the liberating feast of Holy Communion, we continue the tradition of liberation in our own faith. This bread, this cup, bring us together now. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, we thank you for this incredible meal that we are given, this holy communion that we have together. As we partake at home and here at this, your table, we ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and the cup and upon each of us. And may this holy meal be for us forever the remembrance of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and all that he sacrificed for us. We pray in his name. Amen. So take and eat the body of Christ which is broken for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ which is shed for you. together our post-communion prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gift of our Savior's presence in the simplicity and splendor of this holy meal. Unite us with all who are fed by Christ's body and blood, that we may faithfully proclaim the good news of your love, and that your universal church may be a rainbow of hope in an uncertain world. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer.
in preparing to depart, we as a faith community have heard the word and are called to respond and serve. There are many ways to serve our neighbors and this faith community during this time of pandemic. Watch your email, church website, and Facebook for updates concerning our faith community and how we will organize to help those in need during this time. Just a reminder, all worship will be online until further notice. No in-person worship. Please note all the virtual studies and meetings that are being offered this week. Final details for the faith formation for this fall are coming together and we will be announcing, it will be announced in the next few weeks. Faith formation, Sunday school, will be different, but will be exciting for all ages. Watch for details. If you need to be in touch with Reverend Aarons or Reverend Corzine for emergency pastoral care or name a prayer request, please call 614-733-4547. This number is listed in the Depart to Serve leaflet. Just a reminder that your giving can be done through PayPal, Easy Tide, or simply writing a check and sending it in the mail. No matter how you are giving, be sure to mark it for the mission of the week or to the regular church budget. If you have not done so, please like us on the First Church Facebook page. There will be numerous postings through this time for engagement, activities, and devotion. So again, please monitor your email, the church website, and Facebook page. We invite you to the virtual coffee hour after the service today. You will find the link in the Depart to Serve leaflet. Just click on the link and it will take you to the coffee hour. Let us sing the closing hymn as we depart with a heart to serve. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you. 